Hey guys, Ryan here from SwimPro. Here today to talk a little bit about our new SwimPro Enterprise software uh, festive frog release. So really exciting, we've been working with a number of our partners around the world to produce uh, basically the, the, the best swimming software uh, analysis kit in the world. So as you guys know, we have, the, we have our wireless camera systems. We've got, um, you can get one to six, up to six camera systems per unit. And we can customize beyond that, uh, if, if you please. We've got our new diving cameras, which are great. Uh, turn out to be fantastic. They can also plug into our system and you can also get our wireless cameras and you can plug them into our system, etc. So plenty of flexibility there. So what we've done to, to this point is we've done a huge iOS and uh, software update on our IQ2 analysis recorders and you can see it in front of me here and I'm here in the swim pro lab and I'm going to show you guys a bit about what it does and, and, and what's new um, not just on the software itself but on the iPad and the and the iPhone um, which I have here in front of me so I'm actually using my platinum my wireless platinum plus camera to uh, beam in and, and uh, show what I'm doing here on, on the desk. So first things first, this is the new layer. Uh, new background, new camera icons, time, we've got beautiful icons up the top there, quick reference icons up the top there. We've also got the hover overs there, which the team have done great. So now you can see what all these things do by just hovering over as you can see. We've got our camera window, the camera icons, etc. So what do each th one of these things do? Let's, let's take a look. So firstly, clicking on the SwimPro icon is gonna tell us that we're connected to the internet, uh, if we have that set up correctly. Here just says basically that Swimming Cloud is reachable, so we can cloud all our videos if we please. And also we've got a new feature in Festive Frog called Remote Assistance. If you guys uh, need assistance on pool deck or post session, you can click that and that's going to send our support team an email saying we need assistance and we'll get onto that right away. The, the second button here is our record all cameras. So this is a new feature to Festive Frog. What it allows us to do is record all the, all the cameras that are currently on the screen. So if I throw say a couple of instances of that on the screen, I press the record all cameras. That's going to record each one of those cameras, if I can have you know, four, five, six, one, two cameras on the screen, I stop recording, it's, it's recorded both of those cameras in their respective folders in the file manager which I'll show you later. So really easy way to set up a screen and make recordings of the screen, of the cameras on the screen I should say. The next one is record screen and I'm currently using that with my commentary camera. So record screen allows us to record what's happening on here on our workspace. So you might want to set up a number of different arrangements here. Maybe a delayed feed of that camera, delayed feed of this camera, change the delayed time of this one say. Uh, this one's on 15 seconds, this one's on 50 seconds and let's put a live view of this camera up as well. Simple and basic. And you can see there that we've got a 15 second, a 50 second and a live view. So that's what I've done 50 seconds ago, 15 seconds and live view. And that's also recording all of what I've done here. The next one is our snapshot. Uh, snapshot is, is a screenshot. I click it, it takes a screenshot of what I'm doing and you can share that, that screenshot wherever you are. You might do some, uh, some scientific drawings on the screen. You might, you might want to lose that, all that data. You can take a screenshot of that quite easily. No longer do we have to get our phones out and take a screenshot of the screen. Our drawing feature here, we've got some advanced stuff in there. We've got the basic draw. And then we right mouse button, we've got all freehand, line, arrow, uh, we've got angle grid, you know, tread line, we've got, we can set the colour of our drawings now to offset it against those beautiful blue backgrounds that we work with. And we can go from there. So here I can choose, let's say I want to do an angle, so I do an angle over here in my green, bang, there's my angle. I can then do a grid, etc. I can do a grid like that. I can roll forward and roll back with my mouse. So I can undo and redo, um, and I can turn drawing on and off. Here, next, next feature is our file manager. Open up the file manager. We've got recordings, recording folders of our cameras. 
So when I press record all before, it made an instance of my Platinum Plus. You can see I just switched on my wireless wall cam uh, on one of my claw cam mounts actually. I've got it up the top there and now if I press record all and then I press stop record, it'll make another instance of a Platinum Plus and another instance of my wall cam. So without me having to go in, press and record, etc. So recording all my cameras. Next bit is screencast, which is basically record screen. Uh, but we call it screencast because you can do so much more with that and we'll go into that a bit later. Annotations is again, is, a, is, a, is record screen. So this is when I'm making these recordings. You can see the recordings I made yesterday uh, on our YouTube channel and on our website. So record screen come, uh, saves videos into annota the annotations folder. Worms is a fantastic feature, and we'll go into that a bit later, but that's for our sync cameras. So again, when you put cameras all over the screen and you play them back, or you take recordings and then play them back, you might, you want, might want to sync them up, take them a frame back, a frame, a frame forward, get a, a video from yesterday, and play it uh, and, and compare it to today. So obviously when you're playing those back, they're not going to be in perfectly uh, perfect sync, um, because unless you get the times exactly right. Um, but what uh, Worm will do, which we'll, I'll show you, it allows you to drag them forward and backwards and line them up, and then even ghost, etc. We'll have a look at that later. Snapshots uh, are, you, are obviously where your snapshots go, and then we've got our swimming cloud folder there. So moving along, we've got our transfer monitor. So when you're clouding, USB downloading, etc., that all that progress goes into that transfer monitor, and no longer do you have to wait for that to finish. You can that all just happens in the background. Um, that's a beautiful little thing there. We've got cancel all, cancel selected and clear completed. So even if you've made a heap of videos uh, uh, during training, a heap of recordings or a heap of videos post session and uh, record screens, for example, with commentary cam like I'm doing now, you can cloud that, leave it overnight and you're gonna see that happen in that transfer monitor, a great little feature. So let's give you an example of, of, our, of our worm. So, or our sync camera. If I go into my playback monitor here, I'm sorry, my file manager, and I select a file. Now I'll use one that's that's usable. So let's say I've got two recordings from today and yesterday from the same angle, and I want to sync those recordings up. So you can see them. You can put them side by side. You simply select a lock. Now that locks both controls. So you can see here as I move one, it's moving the other. So it's locked them together. So as I halve the speed, it halves the speed of both of both windows. And you can see down here our new feature is the, the worm bar. So we've got our trim feature. So you move this one along here and you can move with, with the left mouse button and this one comes along with the right mouse button. And my play, my current play state will uh, go back and forth between those so you can see that so that will keep playing over and over again I use the mouse wheel uh, I should move that down so you can see what I'm doing so we can then use the mouse wheel to make so forward and backwards to make step by step analysis of each of each window to do that quite easily and then also what we can do let's assume that these two videos were out of phase I can then move one along. So you, this swimmer comes in front and, and that one comes back relative and move the other along if I wish. Okay. You may want to compare stroke periods. So I can throw that over the top and put him in the pool, maybe right next to himself and compare say the same stroke to the last stroke. So let's line that up like that and let's look at stroke repetition so you can see a breath was taken there and we come down and it does look fairly similar but that's what you can see that's the power of of our synchronization also if, let's say day three say day one is this video day two is this video day three I want to take another video and compare well I can save that quite easily by right mouse buttoning on, on the worm bar, on the sync bar, and pressing save. So it says worm saved as that. So if I then go back into my worm folder, I can see what I did today. So at 10.43 today, and I can double click on that, and it's gonna bring those back to the same state. 
so you can see it adds to the it adds to the last worm that I just made. So again, very very powerful feature there. Now another really really cool feature we have. Uh, we're really pushing the technology here in terms of wireless cameras with the different light levels we have with our indoor pools, when we're training in the mornings, when we're training in the afternoons, um, outdoor pools, mornings, afternoons, we've just got light variants everywhere. Currently the Swim Pro cameras have an auto setting. They do their best obviously to adjust to that, uh, which, which will look fine when you're playing back in real time at, at, at speed one time. The challenge to our cameras is to give a good picture a brilliant picture in any light condition when doing frame by frame really is the biggest challenge. So in that case only really the human mind can make the most optimal decision and so therefore we've get to the, up to Eclectic Eel software release we had the ability to change shutter speeds on the fly but it was a little bit people found it a little bit tricky this in this case we've made it really really dynamic and easy. All you have to do now to change shutter speed so I'll stick this camera back to live view so it's 15 seconds now. So if I go live view, it comes back to me live there. If I right mouse button on my camera now, I've got a, a beautiful little option there called shutter speed. Now currently it's set to auto, but let's say I've got some nice light conditions. I might drop that to one on 1000. And look at that bang, we get one on 1000. Maybe one on 125. You can see it is struggling in, in, in our warehouse lab here. And I can change that back to auto. Same with same with my wall cam. A bit more light here, so I might be able to might have a bit a bit better a bit better go at it. So let's try one on one thousand. You can see there's that's getting pretty low light. Maybe we need a bit more. One on two fifty, which is which would be more than enough for uh, for swimming analysis. You will get a really really crystal clear frame with one on two fifty. One on five hundred is just going to blow you away. But one, if you can get it in an outdoor environment, go for it. So that's our shutter, dynamic shutter speed adjustment. Also, we had some requests for time or a timer. So we, we were inspired. We saw a coach in an outdoor pool roll a stopwatch, uh, a stopwatch out. It was actually in Queensland, Australia, and they rolled a stopwatch out the pool deck. They ran an extension lead all the way out uh, just to show this stopwatch. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, we can, we can just put that in our system and that'll eliminate uh, having to do that totally. It's, it's quite simple. Uh, you can you can do all your analysis. Everything just comes up behind it, and the stopwatch stays in front. You can run videos over the top of it. So it really is a pace clock for the system, a pace clock for for the pool. Uh, we also have, if you right mouse button on the time, it shows the time zone. Uh, we can dynamically select our time zones. Now let's get into the iPad and iOS side of things. I'll show you on my iPhone. I'll throw up a, a Platinum Plus. Get rid of my clock. And I will show you guys what I'm what I've got here. So let me set this screen up. Beautiful. Okay. So here's an iPhone. So first thing we do, uh, we download the app. So the app's called Swim Pro IQ2 Plus. Uh, that's for our uh, IQ2 analysis recorders uh, with Festi with the enterprise software Festive Frog release. So firstly, we make sure we're connected to the, the correct Wi-Fi. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. That's probably a bit small, but it's the Swim Pro IQ2 5 gigahertz network. We don't use 2.4 because it's messy and it's not as reliable. We use 5 gig because it's quite reliable. So we connect to that. We then find our app. If you haven't already downloaded it, uh, go and download it from the App Store, Swim Pro IQ2 Plus. But we open the app. And you can see what comes up is our is the home screen of our app. So what have we got at the top here? We've got our cameras. There are live cameras. We've got a, a function called screencast, uh, which is a, which which I'll talk about in shortly. We've got our recordings, which are actually in this case on the cloud. We've got our uh, files that are local to our app, uh, represented by a play button, and then we've got all our camera camera recordings that we've made on our IQ2 and or on our phone. So to go into, actually I might show this on the iPad, it might look a bit, big, a bit bigger and a bit better. So here it is on the iPad. So again up here I've got my live cameras, you can see we've got a beautiful little, little stream coming through there too, so you guys are going to get the underwater preview of what's actually happening on each camera. And then you can go in there when it's of interest. So I won't go into that one because that one's our camera. 
let's go into this one here. That's our that's our wall cam. So you can see that loads up, and we have recording. We've got we've got drawing on the screen. We've got our recording button here. We can go back up here, and we've also got delayed playback down the bottom here. So one touch will give you delayed playback. You can set that on the on the side of the pool and use this as a screen. So we can make a recording on our app. So we in Classic Swim Pro style, we record on, then we record off. You can see it comes up down the bottom here. We play that back. We've got a beautiful frame by frame scroller now. So we can really get some detail. We've got our main video scroller up the top there. We can draw on the screen. We can clear that drawing. We can shake to clear as well. We've also got our annotations button over here. If I want to make an annotation on top of that, I simply turn that on and now that's recording my voice. I draw on the screen to show what I'm doing. I move a few frames forward, a few frames back. I then make my point, stop the annotation, and then I can move on. You can see the annotation comes up down the bottom here. I'm, I can press that and that will play back if I like. Let's go back to the home screen. So now on the home screen you can see I have an annotation there available for me but it's got a zip file on it. Now what that means is that needs processing because we have three different files, audio, video and we have drawing. So in this case I can press that and that's going to make that file for me. We don't do that in real time and we don't do that after you, uh, after you make your annotation. Reason being we want you guys to quickly capture, annotate and move on and leave the processing for later. So that's then processed and you can hear, see if I turn it up and hear my voice. There's the annotation we just made. Now what can you do with that annotation? Again, all new. We've made it so you guys can select, just like on, on normal iOS, select your file, hit share, and you can share it to any one of your supported applications now. You can also save it to the, to the camera roll. So that's a quick way of sitting around the Swim Pro system, uh, either coaching or as, a, as an observer, grabbing your iPad or iPhone, and again, you're not limited to the number of users that you can use. Uh, you, the only thing that's going to limit you is, is network bandwidth, but we've tried 10 10 users at once and, and it's not a problem on iPhone and iPad. So that allows you to sit around, grab, grab the, uh, the camera of interest and then the stroke and style or the point of interest on the swimmer, grab that in a recording, annotate over the top of it and move on and make a heap of those, compile them and then send them off. It's, it's really, really focused on workflow, both again on iPhone and iPad. So that's a general overview of, of what's new. Uh, or some of the things that are new in our Festive Frog release. Uh, plenty of things to come. We've got some great updates coming and planned for 2016. Uh, exciting times. We're, we're meeting with, again, some key individuals, based, really probably once a month. Uh, we, we have meetings now for 2016 with our key individuals uh, and key partners uh, in the swimming market. And we'll be looking for their feedback. We'll be looking for your feedback. And we're going to shape this moving forward. We're in a great position to be able to shape this moving forward uh, in a way that's going to work for you, that's going to work for your, for your, uh, for your coaching workflow on Pool Deck, that's, that's not going to encroach in on your coaching. It's going to allow you to coach and, leave, and the technology will supplement and complement your coaching. Uh, so very exciting times for Swim Pro in 2016. I look forward to working with you guys.